While Republicans control both the Senate and House, their majority over Democrats is the slimmest it has been in years, especially in the House, where Republicans outnumber Democrats 31 to 29. We sat down with Democratic Representative well, Kirsten Engel and asked whether Democrats have a seat at the table. We are now almost 50-50 in this state. There are uh, 31 Republicans and 29 Democrats in the Arizona House, 17 to 13 in the Senate. The, the numbers are extremely close. So this, of all times, is a time when the parties really need to sit down together. Uh, and that is what, frankly, we just haven't seen. Uh, as a Democrat, uh, we feel like we have been frozen out of the negotiations where um, we're in, what we're now facing is a Republican budget that the Republicans don't have the votes to pass. They need the Democrats. So rather than going through, frankly, what I see is a charade right now of passing a budget that we don't have the, that they don't have the votes to pass through the Senate. Why don't we sit down, you know, be in the cage together and figure out a compromise, bipartisan budget that we can all get on board with. When you say the cage, you talk about the Joint Legislative Budget Committee. How closely would you say the Democrats and the Republicans are each working with that body to be sure that a budget that matters to average Arizonans is actually being reviewed? Well, I think there's there's been a lot of discussions. You know, each each group has been working out their own proposed budget. They've been working with those budget analysts. Uh, I think what you see is the budgets that you get, uh, they're accurate budgets, but they reflect the priorities of the different parties. Uh, and they're not super far off from each other. Uh, that's why there really is an opportunity to come up with one bipartisan budget. The budget that has been proposed, what, what do you like about it? What don't you like? Well, I, there's, there's some good things in the, the current budget, uh, the Republican budget that we've looked at. Uh, the governor is, is, is going forward with the 20 by 20 plan. Uh, there's a little bit of extra money for textbooks and computers in the schools. Uh, there's a, a lifting of the freeze on kids' care, the low-income health care program. But we are at such a critical time in the state. Uh, we have some real additional revenues. And what I don't like about the budget, frankly, is how we're proposing, how it's being proposed to use those additional revenues. Rather than fully funding education, which we could do right now, uh, that money is really being handed out in tax cuts. And, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, this is the time to make up for years of neglect in funding our schools, our social programs, infrastructure, our roads, homelessness, this is the time that we can make that up. And it seems that we have enough money to do that and put some money into, more money into the rainy day fund, like what the governor wants. And I think that's prudent. One of the advocacy groups who's here today at the legislature says, how can we keep cutting taxes when we don't know what future revenues are really going to actually, you know, what, what will their fruition be? How will they look in the coming years? Well, that's a great point. Uh, there is an awful lot of, you know, fuzzy predictions going on in the size of this tax cut that's been given. It is based upon projections of future revenues. And we've seen in the past that those revenues are just not, those predictions are just not accurate always. Uh, so that's very risky for us to be putting into place a permanent tax cut. And I think this is a very important point. We're putting in place really a permanent tax cut. You need a supermajority in the Arizona legislature in order to increase taxes. So once we cut taxes, it's gonna be very, very difficult, if not impossible, to change that. And that is based on returning taxes that folks are saying, well, you know, we've got that because of the, tr the Trump tax cut, so we're just passing that on to our people. Well, that tax cut runs out in 2025. Uh, the Prop 123 money for our schools, it runs out in 2025. So we're putting in place tax cuts that are going to affect our ability to fund our schools, and, uh, you know, we're going to lose money that in 2025 we're going to really wish that we had. Okay. Kirsten, thank you.